While things do look to be taking a step in the wrong direction for the New Orleans Saints and offensive tackle Ryan Ramchick, there is good news. We got all that and a little bit of land yet for you on today's episode of Locked on Saints. You are Locked on Saints, your daily New Orleans Saints podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What is good, Houdet Nation and Houdet family? I'm your host, Ross Jackson, New Orleans native, your New Orleans Saints expert and credential member of the media covering those New Orleans Saints as a senior writer and reporter over at Saints News Network. And on today's episode of Locked on Saints, we're exploring some updates from Saints head coach Dennis Allen from the league meetings, including another surgery for Cam Jordan, another offseason surgery for Cam Jordan. What's the timeline like for his return and why it doesn't feel like that big of a deal? We got some not so great news on Ryan Ramchek from Dennis Allen. So what does it mean for him? What does it mean for the Saints? And what's the good news around all of it? Well, there's just a lot of ways to address this issue if the New Orleans Saints choose to go that route. We got all that and much more for you on today's episode. We appreciate you very much for being an everyday or making us your first listen of the day every day here on the Locked On Saints podcast, proud part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And today's episode of Locked On Saints is brought to you by friends. At Game Time, download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the promo code Locked On for twenty dollars off of your first purchase. That check out Game Time today, last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. So the New Orleans Saints got some bad news. It sounds like when it comes to Ryan Ramchek, but the worst isn't necessarily here yet, right? We're not talking about worst case scenario just yet. This is an early indication of things, maybe not necessarily being where the Saints had expected when it comes to Ryan Ramchek. So. To get you caught up here, we're going to roll a little bit of Dennis Allen's conversation with some of New Orleans media who are over in Orlando for the league meetings, and then I'll give you my thoughts on the situation and why we shouldn't necessarily hit the panic button just yet. And of course, we'll also still explore ways that the New Orleans Saints can deal with this. And sure, you can call me whatever you want, ever the optimist and all that, but just give me a moment and I'll explain uh, what I want to explain here. But first, let's hear Dennis Allen's update on Ryan Ramchek and where things stand as of the league meeting. You know, at the Combine a few weeks ago, I was feeling a lot better about it. Um, and yet, I don't know that I'm seeing as much progress as I was hoping to see, you know, at this point. So, I think that still kind of remains to be seen. But here's the cool thing. we got plenty of time. You know, no different than what we were talking about with with Cam and being a veteran player and, and uh, um, you know, probably not – utilizing necessarily a lot during during this OTA and in uh mini camp you know I would see the same thing you know with Ram too so um I think we're just going to have to wait and see how that all goes as we go through you know all the off season and and as we get into the training camp aspect so that's the update from Dennis Allen on Ryan Ramchek in case you did miss it Ryan Ramchek of course dealing with that sort of degenerative knee issue is the degenerating ligament there. That's going to be just kind of a lifelong battle for him. Uh, if you track the timeline for all of this at the end of the season, he wasn't even able to finish the season because of what was going on. Uh, it sounded like at sometimes conversations might have kind of lent themselves towards maybe the idea of him hanging it up, right? Like not even being able to get out on the field again. Then all of a sudden it was like, okay, it wasn't a major surgery. It was an off season sort of minor surgery and that things were sounding good from what we spoke with uh, Dennis Allen over at the Combine. Now, all of a sudden, a month later, things have kind of changed course. And this is what happens when it comes to medical stuff, right? Like you get information as a head coach that says, hey, thumbs up, things are going in the right direction. It doesn't mean that things are going to stay in the right direction. And unfortunately, that seems to be what's happened here with Ryan Ramchick. The thing that I want to point out, and it kind of gave you a little bit of a sneak peek into what we're talking about, about Cam Jordan a little bit later on in the show, is that, you know, Dennis Allen's right. Like the thing to remember here is that the Saints goal for Ryan Ramchek need not be that he's on the field during rookie mini camps or OTAs in June or anything like that. It's really, you know, are you going to be ready for September, right? We're not looking at Ryan Ramchek's return being for training camp and for the preseason. Who cares? Like he's been in the off- offense enough. He knows what it is that the New Orleans Saints want to do. Yes, granted, it is a new offensive system that's coming in. So maybe that's one thing that gives you some pause, but get him in towards the back end of training camp, and then you're in a much different position, much better position, and you're fine in terms of what it is that you want him to do. It's what we talked about over and over again in terms of 
you know, offense in the NFL, everyone does the same stuff. It just depends upon how you scheme it up. So you're not I mean, asking him to do something wildly different. You're just asking him to do maybe a little bit more of something, a little bit less of something, or doing that specific thing in different situations than maybe would have been called bef- what would have been called before. And that's kind of what you're looking for. You're looking for how is it that you balance what it is that you already do well. And how do you utilize that out on the field against your opponent? And how do you call plays at the right time and call the right plays at the right time, which was a big issue, of course, for the Saints over the course of the past couple of seasons. So you're not asking him to relearn how to play football here, right? It's not all of a sudden like you're drafting him to a basketball team and he's having to learn another sport. Like, let's be real, right? Like, this is a different situation there. And so, yes, his experience within the offense is absolutely something that makes sense. His experience as a player in the NFL is something that absolutely puts him in a position to where it's like, hey, if you're not there at OTAs and you're not there at, you know, mini camps and stuff like that, you can still read the playbook like you'll be fine. And so there is sort of this maybe a little bit of a later target in terms of when the actual expectations are for when he can get out on the field. The other thing that you should keep in mind here too is sort of just the optimism around the idea of even this thing being taking a wrong turn, just hearing the team kind of talk about like, hey, this let's not overreact here. Let's wait and see what happens. And here's what Dennis Allen had to say on that front. I think more more of it's just been vision with him and, and, and he just isn't quite where I was probably hoping he'd be. Uh, and, and and really, quite frankly, where, where he was hoping he'd be. So, um, but again, there's a long time before we kick the ball off. So, I wouldn't jump to any any conclusions right now, but but you know we'll, we'll we'll see how it goes over the next you know three, four, five, six months, whatever that is, before we get to the season. So there you have it, right? If he's not where he needs to be right now, can he get there later on down the road? There's still some optimism there. So again, call me whatever you want, forever the optimist and all these other things, but let's kind of see how all of this ends up panning out and how all this goes. Now, of course, those are the public facing comments. There are reports out there from Ian Rappaport, things like that, that there is major concern or true concern about where things are headed for Ryan Ramchick and what that could potentially mean. So we can't color it all roses and rainbows, but there is still the situation to where you look at it and go, okay, let's see where things wind up. Because in the meanwhile, you can still be prepared for this. You can draft a right tackle that you trust. You can sign a right tackle that you trust. You can elevate a guy within your own offense that you trust. There's endless opportunity here still for the New Orleans Saints who sit with, I believe, just under $10 million in uh, salary with guys like you know Alvin Kamara, Taysom Hill, and others, who's, and Jawan Johnson, whose contracts haven't even been touched yet. And it gives you an opportunity to be able to maybe make some more money, go out there and spend some more money, things like that. So Look, we've always known that the New Orleans Saints could not be done at offensive line with what they have right now. And in my opinion, you're still looking to effectively draft the next guy behind Ryan Ramchick. You have to be ready for that. So even if there is optimism that he's ready to go at the beginning of the season, do you have the optimism that he's going to be ready to go for 17 games? I don't think that you can. And I don't think that you can have enough confidence right now to just close the book and say, I'm sure he'll be fine. And I'm sure he'll be fine in 2025 at that. Draft yourself a right tackle that you can see being the future at the position, or go out there and sign somebody that you're okay turning to, or make sure Landon Young's the right guy for you if that's the route that the Saints decide to go. I want to take a look at that next. What are some of the ways that the Saints can safeguard against this? Regardless of all the optimism, still got to be prepared, right? Still smart football, good team building. You want to be prepared for the worst in this situation. So how do they go about doing it? And for me, it starts with one name and one name only that could be a potential first round selection for the New Orleans Saints. At least that's where it all starts. We got all that coming up for you as we continue on with today's episode of Locked on Saints, part of Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode of Locked on Saints is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. Say goodbye to all of your busted brackets. You know your brackets already busted because over at FanDuel, you can go ahead and bet on every single game in both the women's and men's tournament. You never have to worry about getting knocked out if you're hoping for a string of wins. You got to worry about all that because whether you're betting on a big upset or the one seed, you're going to be able to go dancing on America's number one sports book. And right now, new customers are going to get $200 in bonus bets. If your first $5 bet wins, that's 200 bucks. You can then use on point spreads, on money lines, and even pick who will win it all. For over in the men's tournament, of course, 
UConn still in the lead in terms of championship odds at plus 220. You got the Houston Cougars right after that at plus 550. And Purdue tied up, actually, now that I'm looking at it, with Houston at 550 as well. So you got a little bit of a two-team race there for number two. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started in all of that and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. All right, family, the New Orleans Saints could safeguard themselves when it comes to Ryan Ramchek for 2024 and beyond by potentially selecting Oregon State offensive tackle Talese Fuaga in the first round of this year's NFL draft. But that's not the only route that they have available to them to try to safeguard themselves a little bit from this potential situation. We appreciate you very much, as always, for making Locked on Saints your first listen of the day every day. Don't forget, you can also go and check out the Locked on Sports Today 24-7 National Sports Stream, the first of its kind over on YouTube. You can also find it for free, uh, find it also for free on the free Amazon TV channels app. If you're like me and you're tired of those other big networks, Fox Sports, ESPN, everybody shouting and yelling at each other, and you want to hear information from the people that are actually there, the experts that actually cover the team, not just the people that talk loudly about the team, Locked On Sports today on YouTube and on the free Amazon TV Fire channels app. It's absolutely the way to go. It's literally what's on my TV like 24-7. So go and check them out today. All right. So for the New Orleans Saints, Look, like I mentioned, there still seems to be some optimism, even though this is kind of taking a little bit of a wrong term in terms of what the initial expectations were, or the most recent expectations were, let's say it that way, when it came to Ryan Ramchek, things, you know, like Dennis Allen said, they're not really, you know, things haven't progressed the way that he would have liked. Uh, they haven't really progressed the way that Ryan Ramchek had hoped. And the reality is that they still can, right? There's still a chance that those things do progress in the way that they want. Doesn't mean that the story is over, close the book and move on. But I think it's pragmatic. I think that it's the right decision to just be ready just in case. And we know that offensive line is still a place that the New Orleans Saints should absolutely be looking to address as early as the first round in this year's NFL draft. Now, do they have to? No, this is a really, really good tackle class. They could wait into the second round. They can trade up into the third or fourth round and find themselves guys that can hold up at right tackle. And look, I don't think that drafting a right tackle in the first round is a bad idea. I get it. Uh, what do you call it? Positional value, all that other stuff. Like I understand all that, but you face a lot of elite edge rushers playing over on the right side. Like that was JJ Max, JJ Mac, JJ Watt side. That was somebody tell me who JJ Mac is and why I said that. Uh, JJ Watt side. That was Khalil Mack side. That's the side that Cam Jordan has always rushed from and all that. Like you still need you are very good offensive tackles over on the right side. And it just so happens that the Saints have had a run, a fantastic one over the course of their last, you know, most recent history and all that. And so I think you need to be prepared for that. So for me, a guy like Talise Fuaga in the first round at Oregon State, I wouldn't be mad at it. And he gives you some versatility too. He can move around, he can play on both sides and all that. I've seen some people suggest maybe moving Trevor Penning over to right tackle, probably not the wisest choice. Like, I think that when it comes to Trevor Penning, if you're going to give him an idea, or not an idea, but an opportunity to get back up there and kind of crack the, the starting lineup for you and all that, do it where he's strongest. Do it where he has experience and where he's played before. I mean, the guy has taken a whopping total of 10 career snaps at right tackle during his collegiate years over at UNI. And that was in 2019. And the most that he's ever taken in a single game at right tackle was just four. So probably not necessarily the route that you want to go. But if you can find yourself a guy that you do trust that could be worth a first round pick or a second round pick or a third, you know, a packaging two fifth round picks to move up, or a heck, you just want to draft him in the fifth round, that's totally fine. Uh, but when I look at a guy like this, six foot five, 324 pounds, he's right in the same in the sort of the Saints prototype and metric and all that. Five uh one three forty yard dash, not blazing, but still very respectable. Are uh, you talking about a nine point six zero RAS? If anybody cares about RAS still everything like that. And so like, there's ways for you to find the guys that could potentially come in and have that impact for you. And then you still got free agents that you can look at as well. And you've still got guys that you could potentially reach out to and that you could see if they end up, um, uh, you know, working out for you or finding a way over, you know, uh, the, the one thing when it comes to, you know, potential free agent, one of the big names that keeps popping up, of course, is uh, Mackay Becton, right? Former first round selection himself, uh, played with the New York Jets and was a guy that has been in sort of these wide zone offenses. Don't forget that it was, uh, you know, you can look at uh, John Benton, who is now the New Orleans Saints offensive 
uh, our offensive line coach, he has spent a little bit of time with Mackay Becton over in New York because he went over there with you know one of the um, one of the Lafleur brothers uh, when they took over as offensive coordinator, and he he was out there working with them as well. So there's a potential connection there. Uh, it's 24 years old. Like there's still opportunity to see him grow and develop. You could sign him. You know, he's, he hasn't signed a contract yet, so you might be able to get him on a little bit of a cheaper deal after the draft or something like that. And then you have somebody that has NFL experience, that has starting experience, that was very promising as a prospect coming out that sits behind Ryan Ramchek potentially for, you know, at most a year, maybe, you know, some collection of games in 2014, 2024, rather, he ends up stepping into uh, a starting role or something if Ryan Ramchek has to miss time. And you've got a starter that you can plug in there that has played in sort of these wide zone, fun, run around offenses before, and that has the athleticism to get all that done. Um, that's another route that the Saints could absolutely go if they wanted to go the free agency route. They could go the trade route. I don't think you really want to go that route, though. First of all, I guess if you're able to trade one of those fifth round picks or one of those sixth round picks to bring somebody in, or heck, even two of those fifth round picks if you wanted to, then maybe that makes sense. But you would have to find the right player on the right contract is the problem. And so when it comes to kind of trying to find that, that can be a little bit tough, right? You want to have full control over what that contract looks like. You don't want to absorb somebody else's contract. But if we look at a guy like Mekhi Becton, just to go back to him, he was drafted in 2020, uh, six foot seven, 364 pounds, uh, five, one 40 yard dash. He's 9.85 RAS, like very athletic player at that spot. And has he been sort of what was promised in the NFL? No, I think that's safe to say, but does that mean that maybe you know, the change of scenery thing could potentially work for him. Yeah, sure, it could. Um, And also, like, you do, do you need a full-time starter right now? No, probably not. Like, you'd be okay with having a guy that's a free agent that you can get on a decent enough deal. So in terms of market value, when it comes to Mekhi Becton, SpotRack right now has him paced at $12.9 million. I don't know how much that skews away now that he wasn't a part of the first uh, kind of wave of free agency and things like that. It's a little bit too steep, maybe in terms of a guy, certainly too steep for a guy that you want to pay uh, to be a backup. But hey, look, if you're able to make magic happen, you know, particularly early on in the contract or have something else, you know, an incentive heavy deal or something like that, then maybe there's an opportunity there, but maybe that's not necessarily the right fit. But if they get desperate enough, that's certainly a route that they can go. And then of course, you still have Landon Young too, but you have to make sure that that's the right decision for you. Moving forward, and then it would be, of course, be Landon Young in addition to the NFL draft. And then we'll see, right? What happens if Ryan Ramchick's ready to go week one? You put him out there week one, but again, I, I think it's still pragmatic. It's still a wise choice. Maybe safeguard yourself beyond that. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of a different tone, though, when it comes over to the defensive line, particularly when it comes to Cam Jordan. He did have ankle surgery, and that was really no surprise to anybody. We got that coming up for you as we continue on and wrap up today's episode of Locked on Saints, part of Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode of Locked on Saints is brought to you by our friends at Game Time. Game Time is my favorite place to go for purchasing tickets, especially for somebody like me that is usually buying tickets moments in advance rather than months in advance. And that's what I love about Game Time. They've always got deals on tickets. Uh, they make sure all the way up to the start of the event that there's something there for you. And even an hour after it starts, you can still find people trying to get rid of those tickets and all that and make a little bit back. And Game Time absolutely helps you get that done. They've got uh, last minute flash deals as well, sponsored deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and much more. You can find it all over on Game Time today and even see a view from the seats before you purchase the tickets. One of my favorite, favorite features of game time. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time today. Download the game time app and use the promo code locked on for $20 off of your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account. Use that code L O C K E D O N for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Let's get it, Huda Nation, the New Orleans Saints, uh, dealing with another surgery, right? So you've had one from uh, Ryan Ramchick this offseason. There was the one that's on the way, or not on the way. I guess it's done now when it comes to Chase Young. By the way, all things seem to be optimistic on the Chase Young front as well so far. So still the timeline expected to be conservatively um, the beginning of the season, right? Week one that he'll be ready. But Cam Jordan also had surgery, but this one kind of comes as no surprise and also eh, not really something that uh, carries the same 
uh, questionable or question marks around the expectations of return. Seems like this one's going to go pretty quickly. So we're going to get to that here as we continue on today. And of course, this is your team every day. So I want to make sure that, you know, we're right back here with you tomorrow with another episode, thinking maybe of doing another mock draft, but let's wait and see kind of how all of the news continues around as well. So make sure you come through for another episode of Locked on Saints tomorrow. Oh, and you can also, we didn't get to go live Tuesday night. So Wednesday morning at 1030 a.m. Central Time, if you're watching or listening to this before then, uh, John Hendricks and I will be live over at the Second and Saints YouTube page. So you can go and check us out. A little bit more long form. I always want to say long firm long form, a little bit more kind of like question and answer kind of format and stuff like that too when we're live. So make sure you come through and check out John and I over at Second and Saints, uh, who also, by the way, John, uh, over in the league meetings, helping out with all of these videos. And the next video that I want to roll for you is another clip of uh, Dennis Allen's interview discussing kind of the expectation around Cam Jordan. Cam Jordan had ankle surgery uh, this offseason. It was reported first by NewOrleans.Football, confirmed by NOLA.com. Um, and Matt Paris over in uh, over in Orlando, both of those guys over in Orlando. And um, it doesn't seem like it's that big of a deal. And of course, look, Cam Jordan is no stranger to offseason surgeries. He's had procedure after procedure after procedure in the offseason and has still played the majority of his games throughout his career. So let's take a look at what Dennis Allen had to say about the potential timeline for um, for Cam Jordan and his return. And we'll discuss why this one doesn't feel like a panic button situation. I think it's going to be anything that's going to keep him out of the spring. Um, I do think this. I do think when when you have uh, a guy like Cam who's getting a little older, um, you know, how much do we do with him in the spring? Um, how much do we do with him in training camp? I, I think those are all you know things that you kind of take into account when you're dealing with you know a more veteran player. So it doesn't seem like he's going to be in a situation where he's going to miss a ton of time. And I like the consideration there that, yeah, it probably won't cut into his spring, which would mean things like OTAs and mandatory mini camp and then getting into training camp and stuff like that in the summer. Uh, but just because you can doesn't mean you have to, right? I mean, what's the use? Like, what's the purpose of having Cam out there during OTAs, you know, overworking and potentially like causing some issue with that recently? I almost said like surgery or surgerized uh, ankle, but like, you know, this ankle that just recently, you know, had surgery. And so that like, what's the, what's the point? Why, why do it? You know, there's an opportunity there for him to be out there and kind of set the tone and everything. I get that. And technically he can still do that without actually fully participating in OTAs. He can still be out there. He can still be somebody that's a vocal leader and pushing his unit, pushing his guys, all these other things. I, I don't think that that doesn't have to happen, but Dennis Allen's right on the money here that there's not really a reason to kind of look at this and go, hey, well, you know, is he going to be ready for OTAs? Is he going to be able to participate in OTAs? And there's no reason for him to be in a situation to where it's like, yeah, well, he's got to go out there and go all out during OTAs anyway. And so it seems that the ability to kind of be able to rest him over the course of spring, get him ready for training camp at the beginning of the season, of course, those are going to be the things that are most important. So I think that that's what you're going to see when it comes to Cam Jordan here. That's why I don't think you're really pushing the panic button here. But again, I still think that adding another edge rusher for the New Orleans Saints and still beefing up the interior of their defensive line could make sense for New Orleans. It doesn't have to be a first round guy. I mean, if Dallas Turner falls to you at 14, you sprint to the podium, right? Like there's no doubt about that. But I mean, guys like Jalen Her Harrell from Michigan, guys like Brennan Jackson from uh, from Wazoo, guys like Muhammad Kamara from Colorado State. You can go even later in the draft with other edge rushers as well. Like there, are the the kid out of uh, James Madison. Like there's enough of these players, and there's enough talent deep, deep, deep into this draft that I think you can continue to kind of say, hey, let's get one more player in to maybe head up, you know, the or, or continue this rotation or whatever, and just continue the influx of youth and speed at that position group. You know, Dennis Allen also spoke a little bit more about all the different ways you can get to the passer. And before he named power, he named speed. <laughs> and so you can kind of feel like everything that kind of tells you that the Saints are like very interested in speed on the defensive line. Like all of a sudden it's first on their list for ways to get after the quarterback and athleticism is really important. And they go after Chase Young, who's like a pure speed rusher. And he talked about like the speed that with which Chase Young can get to the quarterback and stuff like that. Like there's just a lot of ways the Saints can go there. So 
I think continuing to beef up both sides of the trenches, like obviously you want to be ready for your days after Ryan Ramchek. Hell, you want to be ready for your days after Cam Jordan too. And so continue to take a swing there. And we've seen the Saints do a good job. Well, I want to be careful about saying good job there, right? We've seen the Saints take swings there. Whether or not they've done a good job, Marcus Davenport, ah, that didn't work out for sure. Uh, Peyton Turner, jury still out. He's got to be able to see him stay out on the field. He's very talented and he makes plays when he's out there. But I think it's fair to say like, hey, the expectation now is, or the, the evaluation now comes down to, can you stay on the field? And then finally, you know, Isaiah Foskey, like he was another one that showed a lot of potential when he was out on the field, but missed the majority of his rookie season. And so adding another young guy in there to compete with those other young guys, like that could make sense because what if all three pan out? What if two of the three pan out? What if one of the three pans out and you've already got Carl Granderson and you've already got Cam Jordan for another couple of years? And then potentially we'll see what happens with Chase Young after the 2024 season. Are the Saints able to bring him back? Right. So I think that like continuing to roll the dice and take the shots there at what is a premium position. Makes a ton of sense. Doesn't mean you have to do it at 14. Doesn't mean you have to do it in the first round. There's still opportunities to do that throughout this draft, just like there is with offensive tackles. So look, um, news today, not necessarily, or news yesterday on Tuesday, not necessarily what you had hoped, right? Hearing that Cam Jordan had surgery, hearing that Ryan Ramchick's recovery isn't necessarily progressing as much as they had hoped that it would. Ah, it stinks and everything, but it, it's, it's March 26th. Right. And so there's still time to kind of see how all this goes. There's still time for the team to be able to address that safeguard themselves and kind of build up their reserves, build up their depth, which I think has to be an emphasis for this team going into the draft. Everything as well, especially with nine selections right now. Like there's a lot of opportunity to use eight of those, right? Considering you, you can package two in the fifth and then move up and all that. Like there's still an opportunity to walk out with like an eight person draft class here and help to build up some of that depth in terms of the youth on that team. And then still the second wave or that next wave of free agency to come as well. So while things, while the news is kind of down in the dumps on Tuesday in terms of, you know, where things are headed injury wise, health wise, age wise for the New Orleans Saints, uh, there's still a lot of time and there's still a lot of options for them to be able to continue to address this. And again, me, forever the optimist saying that should not surprise you, but I'm just looking at how a clock works, y'all. I'm just looking at how a calendar works. That's really all that it is. And there's still a lot of time and a lot of opportunity for this New Orleans Saints team. Let's just see if they use that time and use that opportunity appropriately, or if they kind of sit back and go, let's just sit back and hope and wait, wait and hope for the best, which is not something any NFL team should ever be doing. And I don't expect the New Orleans Saints to do that. All right, y'all, we appreciate you very much. As always, making Locked on Saints your first listen of the day, every day for your second listen. Make sure you're checking out Locked on LSU as the LSU women have advanced to the Sweet 16. Locked on Pelicans, another big win against the Pistons, another big game last night. We'll see how the New Orleans Pelicans uh, match up against a big time end of their schedule. Lots of opportunity to prove themselves against some of the NBA's best. And Jake Madison's breaking it all down for you over at Locked on Pels. Caroline Fenton's got you covered over at Locked on LSU. Thanks as always, making Locked on Saints part of your day, part of your routine for saying yes to me and the show. As always, if you see me, please say hi. If you need anything else around your New Orleans Saints in between these episodes, make sure you follow me on your favorite social media at Ross Jackson, N-O-L-A. Hit me up. Learn how the family's doing. Let me know how you're living. Let me know how you're moming them. And trust you that nation. I'll holla at you.